Hello, and welcome to another episode of Method of Undetermined Coefficients. We're going to talk a little bit more about families of functions, and I'll start with this example here, uh, y double prime minus 4y equal t cubed. Okay, so again, leaving the homogeneous solution question to you, I will jump right to determining what yp should look like. And now the, the, the thing to notice is that there's a t cubed on the right-hand side, and we should just convince ourselves that the homogeneous solution does not include a t cubed in it, which, as you can see, it's going to be that e to the 2t, e to the minus 2t again, as it was in the previous example. So that's not going to be a worry. So let's just write down what we think the yp should look like. Clearly, our first guess would be a t cubed. And now when we plug a t cubed in, uh, if you just think about what's going to come out of this, I'm going to take two derivatives of it to replace this term, and that means that I'm going to end up with a 3at squared. Sorry, uh, 3at squared and then 6at. 6at. So I'm going to have a 6at in front, so that's a linear t expression. And then when I plug in the y term, it's going to have a t cubed. So I'm going to have a t and a t cubed in there. Well, that means that I'm going to have to balance this with a t squared. And so maybe all we need is a b t. Now, that may work in this particular instance here, but as a general rule, because each of the terms that we include may have interactions with the other derivatives, the general sort of safe approach is to just go through all the descending powers all the way down to a constant term. And that is the safest way to go. So now if we go through this problem with this example, actually let's just do that quickly. So y p double prime of t is going to be, we get a six, a, a three and a two out of the first one. So we get six a t and then we get a two b t and then another derivative gives us 2b and then here we get a first derivative of ct is just c and then zero so that's it so we just have these two terms and then uh, the 4 what minus 4y is just 4 times this whole expression okay so then putting that all together yp double prime minus 4yp is equal to 6at plus 2b minus 4 times a t cubed minus 4 b t squared <clears throat> minus 4 c t minus 4 d. Now if we match these up to the right hand side of our given differential equation, that's got to all equal t cubed. So you'll notice there's only one t cubed term, so we know already that minus 4a has to be equal to 1, so a is equal to minus 1 over 4. Okay, great. And then there's an a appearing in front of the t, and here, and another t down here, and that's the only ones we see, and so that means that 6a has to be equal to minus 4c, but we know that a is, oh, I forgot a minus sign there. So a is minus 1 fourth, and that's equal to minus 4c. So c is going to be equal to 6 over 16, or 3 over 8. So we have c and a determined. And then you'll notice that there's a b term here, there's a, a, sorry, a constant term here and here, and a, cube, a squared term here. Now if I set b and d equal to zero, that disappears, that disappears, and that disappears, which is what we want because the only thing that should be around is the t cube. So we got rid of the t term by using this equation here, and the a term matches by having chosen a equal to one quarter. So if, because in this case there was no single derivative term, this b term and hence the d term didn't really play any role and we could have omitted them and that could have been a, a good 
improvement or simplification of our guess by intuition or by just looking at the form of the differential equation for a bit. Um, but if you want to be careful in general and not think too far ahead and maybe get in trouble, the best bet is to use a full family of derivatives. And this family is defined by all the derivatives in order, so going down. So we know that we need to include a t cubed. And so because there's derivatives going on in the right-hand side, we need to include all the derivatives until it closes. So how, why does this close? Because it goes from t cubed down to t squared. Derivative of t squared is 2t. Derivative of t is a constant. Derivative of constant is 0, and we're done. So that closes the, the family. Okay, so that is how to deal with something like t cubed. So um, let's do another example. And this is not so much to determine the family as it is to see methods for solving more complicated expressions. So let's say we had an equation, and I'm going to stick with this same right-hand side because we can easily recall what the, the, the homogeneous solutions were. And so let's say I have a combination of cosine of 2t plus t cubed. Now, uh, the one thing that we could do is, oops, we could define our yp as, so we're going to have to include a cosine 2t for sure. And now if you look at the equation here, there's no first derivative. There's only a zeroth derivative y and a second derivative. So we could put in a b sine of 2t here, but experience and intuition might show you that this term is just going to turn to zero when I match things up. So I'm actually going to omit that one. And then I can add, so now I'll start with continuing with my alphabet. I want to make sure I have a bt cubed and then all derivatives until this family closes. So I go down to ct squared plus dt plus e. And now this is a big mess to work with. And so if you want to simplify your life a bit, little bit, you can break it into two separate groups. And you can say, okay, I'm going to solve L of y equal cosine of 2t. And then I'm going to solve, and that's for yp1, and then I'm going to solve L of yp2 equal t cubed. And then when I put those two together, I'll, I can just add them because of linearity of the equations. And I can say, well, I'm interested in yp1 plus yp2 because I know that will solve an equation L of y equal, and now I can split these guys up by linearity. And I already have ensured that this one and this one satisfy these. L LP1 satisfies this equation and LP2 satisfies this equation. So I can put in cosine of 2t here plus t cubed here. And I get that the sum of the two of them satisfy the original equation I was given. So you can break up the families like that, in which case I would solve the problem with yp1 of t equal a cosine of 2t and uh, solve so go through that that calculation and then do the yp2 in this way I don't go spreading horizontally all the way across the page when I start writing down all five of those terms uh, plugged back into the original equation so this one is going to be uh, bt cubed plus ct squared plus dt plus e. And this is just a good way of managing real estate on your page. Okay, so um, that covers a lot of uh, what we need to know about uh, the method of undetermined coefficients. I'll just write down an example for you to think about. In general, we can actually solve with the method of undetermined coefficients equations as complicated as, let's say, t cubed plus t times e to the t cosine 2t, where I now have products between these. And so um, this is a pretty messy one, and it's not something we're probably going to see in this course, but it's a, a worthwhile exercise for you to think about what should the yp be 
for a case like this. And we, you have the tools to do that. So I'll leave it to you to think through that one and come up with a proposed YP.